Well, well, well. Wasn't expecting to hear from you guys this early, but welcome to a very special emergency. It's like pop. two in the afternoon for me. Yeah, I know. We don't usually me and Mills talk one time a week, and we just never talk again. But um, <laughs> the only reason. Hey, <laughs> listen, man. Listen, man. And that's what and that's what kept a healthy relationship for all this time. <laughs> Uh, this is, I mean, obviously this isn't a funny reason that we're meeting today, but, uh, definitely a huge reason that we're meeting today. Uh, literally just yesterday, about 24 hours ago on the A show, we talked about comings and goings, uh, at the WWE, uh, people being added to the board, people leaving the board and leaving the company rather. Uh, and today we just got wind or rather last night we got wind from Sean Ross that there were more releases to come. And literally less than 12 hours since then, the releases came. And these are some top level names. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, these names are, I, I would say, probably the biggest releases that they've done in, what would you say, Mills, maybe five years? Ooh, listen, at least, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. They literally said, like, yo, anyone can get it. And that's not like, all right, we're, we're, I'm not trying to make light of this entire thing. And this is an emergency podcast, so that's why I don't sound as crisp as I usually do. We're literally, um, I'm on location um, in the midst of this thing. But yeah, this is the biggest one in years. This is the most, it might be, it literally might be like, yeah, like all in all, the biggest one in years. Yeah. We're trying to think of other ones, but it kind of feels morbid to even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the names are, the releases are, uh, get ready, Braun Strowman, Aleister Black, Woo! Aleister Black, Woo! Lana, Murphy, Ruby Riot, and Santana Garrett. I mean, just to get a couple of them out the way right now, Santana Garrett never actually debuted on the main roster in any, you know, type of capacity. She was not in, not in a, not in a actual, like relevant capacity. Yeah. And I feel like she was jobber to the stars many a time well she wasn't even that at that point like she was she was earmarked to what debut on raw i believe and she just never did uh she was part of the vanessa born kind of call-ups during covid that never really happened and was never official um murphy hasn't been seen on tv in about a couple like six weeks or so um i think he mm-hmm. faced he, he was trying to get back in seth rollins good graces and you know never never i I'm think not, he faced cesaro yeah i think he faced cesaro yeah for seth and and that was during the, the mania build um and you know the the final people are people that were literally where if they weren't in a pay-per-view then they were definitely on tv literally on monday <laughs> and 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 they are gone now um I mean, Mills, what do you think about these releases, you know, as 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 they popped up on your screen or, or really right now after like maybe like an hour or two after they've been announced? Whew, OK, so I was caught off guard because obviously I'm here. I'm at work. Um, decided to take a quick couple of minutes to kind of um, to step aside. But when I literally I literally opened up Twitter and the first thing I see is WWE reporting that all these names are released. And I was like, wait a minute. Like it it hits you like a wave. It hits you like what the fuck just happened? Because I was expecting more releases, but I wasn't expecting releases on this level, like to the point of Braun Strowman, who's been an active figure in WWE television, whether we've liked him or not, has been an active figure for probably the last like six years on WWE television. I mean, just to see him, he might be in terms of these like group releases, he probably makes it one of the biggest just by virtue of his name and former universal champion, former main eventer main evented the pay-per-view that we just finished seeing. Like it, it's, this is insane. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> all things considered, these are huge releases. I think uh, of all of them, I mean, obviously we, we are probably partial to, to really like Alistair black being gone. Um, he's actually on IG live right now or on Twitch right now talking about, it. I don't know if you've seen any of the quotes, but I'll just go ahead and say, uh, what we all thought it was, but he was told that his release was because of budget cuts. And he said he had a good relationship with Vince McMahon who always praised me on my creativity, but they could never nail down the character on the main roster. So Alistair remains that he's not upset, um, that he's in good spirits and, and that, you know, his time at WWE was not as terrible as people are trying to make it out to be. He said he, he, he loved his job and, and, 
he was really excited on what he wanted to do uh, and what was you know what you know you know why he's not in terrible spirits because he knows he's the fucking man like <laughs> well i mean it's I that too. yeah it's, he's the man and he knows that it wasn't his it wasn't like yeah, it wasn't like right right it wasn't that but even if it but even if it was i think it would be subjective i feel like he has enough confidence within himself to be like if they don't see it they are the ones who are crazy because i think alistair black in this occasion um you know we just saw a big monumental return two weeks in raw but he was the damn listen not a lot of people are the cover of the A show. He was the cover of the A show a couple of weeks ago. That's that's big business over here. Um, but he uh, he was someone who was like, okay, he's literally up next, and we're wondering how they can't figure it out because just the look for itself, for Alex the Black is incredible, and he's kept himself in great shape, and he's 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 you know great in the ring, great on the mic, kind of everything he gives and he delivers is really top-notch quality so it was it was kind of weird to see that this was kind of but when you see it's because of budget cuts you're like oh okay i get it but also for him i think he's just so even in the ring you can tell he has a level of confidence with himself he has a level of assurance within himself that he can carry himself he can he knows he can take that and he knows that he can be a star kind of at anywhere. And yeah. this WWE, just being part of WWE and having that kind of like, even his career arc, I guess, which is he could have been somebody and it was clear that they wanted to put him in the right pieces and stuff. And he gets kind of like released under that. Even that career arc in itself is going to help. Well, I mean, Alistair also said, um, talked about Roman. He, this is going live right now. I'm just reading off the tweets. We're, we're doing this in the moment. Um, he said that he enjoys the boundaries of WWE because it inspires him to be more creative. Um, he he put over uh, Vince. He put over Hunter. He put over Bruce, Heyman, o, uh, Orton, Rowan, Harper. Uh, called Roman one of the best locker room leaders he's ever had in his life. Uh, and he says that, you know, this was, you know, this was supposed to be the run. He was told that this was supposed to be the run for him this time. And, um, you know, budget cuts. I could only imagine how much money Braun or he or him was making <laughs> right now. Um, well, Braun, you had to imagine it was a lot. It was a, sh- a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll stop. I'll, I'll get back to the show and stop kind of reading over the, the transcripts here. But um, he's he's taking in a good spirits. And, I, and to that's be good, honest, that's good. and to be honest with you, I don't think he won't be back. You know, I, I think that he absolutely could be back. I think Braun could be back. I mean, this is these budget cuts are. I mean, let's talk about the talent before we get to really like, like cause the big story here. I know the talent. It, it sucks meals. And, and, and that's that's I, I'm, I'm bummed by Alistair. You know, everyone knows on the show that he was one of my yeah. favorites, you know, and I love those types of characters. But um, Ruby Riot was also one of my favorites. You, I championed those two for a really long time. Of course. And I was saying today, you know, as, as we thought of, of, of places where they could go, I was like, I, ROH, to me, seems like the best places that they could go. I, I would like to say this about, and, and I agree with you 100%. I like to say this about Ruby Riot if we're transitioning. She has grown a lot, despite whether people believe that she was never kind of used properly, that she was used to like a limited sort of potential in the company. I think just overall her as a person and as a character and as even a wrestler at some times has grown a lot in the WWE. And I know you for you specifically, you saw a lot in her, even in the NXT run. He was like, yo, we could have done something with Ruby Riot. I think Ruby Ruby Riot could have had a great NXT run. But then she got called up, which is not, you know, it just is what it is. And it's amazing that she got called up. Um, but we always saw potential in her. And then, you know, I, any place, I, Liv Morgan said it on Twitter, any place that gets Heidi, <laughs> any place that gets Ruby Riot, they're going to be better off in the long run. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I mean. Lord, I mean, let's uh, – First of all, the probably the most probably the longest tenured one has to be Lana, right? Yeah, um, Lana is the one that 
shocked me because it's like they they put that's the thing that's that's crazy to me meals and that you know this is going to go into a conversation we're going to have in a couple minutes where it's like there's something up with the un the offloading like this isn't offloading like budget cuts i get and that's what people say but it's like there's something definitely behind who's being hired and who is being let go right Mm -hmm. um the Lana situation is like you chose her over Miro and then you pushed her. They actually, right. honest to God, pushed her. A long form fall program. It was a long, long program. Eight weeks of hitting that table. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So survivor at survivor series. You know what I'm saying? Like there was a, there was a run. They put her with Natalia because obviously it was like, okay, Natalia and her have that relationship. And when they moved Natalia to SmackDown, they put her with Naomi. And, you know, as much as I complain about the matches, you have seen gradual improvement from Lana um, in the ring. So it seems like I don't know what direction they were heading with her because it didn't look like there was a kind of trajectory as they were, as I would have believed in the beginning. In the beginning, when she debuted, when she's alongside, you know, alongside Rusev, now known as Miro and AEW. I would have assumed, okay, because of kind of the era that we were in, the Divas era, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, she would have grown eventually to be a champion. But as we saw, the learning curve just went complete. Whew, learning curve got completely different towards the mid, the mid, um, the mid, I guess, 2010s. Um, and, but she still worked hard to try to meet that curve. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what's next for her. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested to see if she sticks with it. I'm interested to see if she eventually does show up in AEW alongside her husband. I'm interested to see kind of where she goes and what she does from here. Because, you know, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of built. There's a lot of worth. And there is a lot of work that she put in that, she vocalized, especially on that WWE Chronicle last year, um, that she was putting in. And I wonder where does all that go? Um, I got more Alistair quotes here. You ready? Let's go. Um, he goes on a at least four to five minute rant, uh, not rant, but conversation on dirt sheets. He said, don't listen to reporters that say Vince was never high on Alistair Black. That's not true. Um, they have people that tell them warped stories. He says his NXT request was not shot down. Vince wanted to make him work on the main roster, and if it didn't, he would have sent him down. But Vince absolutely wanted to uh, make make it happen for him. And he also says fan, fans should not get mad at the creative. He said Bruce uh, tried to protect him as well as Paul Heyman and said that the word intrigue attached to him and they find him intriguing. And he said, you know, that, that that's what he said. He did, he did confirm the NXT proposal. But also confirmed that Vince said he he nixed it and said we're gonna make this work and it and really you see you see that they were trying to honestly it does mm-hmm. make sense yeah absolutely because I think a lot of the times they were like oh he's being used on TV the easy thing is well can we just put him back in NXT where it did work out for him um, but I'm glad that was nixed because honestly like I don't like a lot of step backs for a lot of people and. Um, you know, I'm I'm glad that he's saying this out. First of all, I think we both can be glad that it's it's not like on Talk is Jericho where it's like the WWE like shit, <laughs> it, right? Like the, well, the, well, the, well, and my thing is this: it never it never looked like, to me at least, Alistair was extremely protected at all times, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mm-hmm. happen if you don't have the the like. Well, how many times did he lose? Realistically, he beat Seth. Yeah, you know he what I'm beat saying? Seth, he beat AJ, yeah. he, he he beat a lot of people. I think he probably towards the latter part of his Raw run, he started losing when he turned heel and stuff like that. But ultimately, I think you would you would mark his career, or at least his run up on the main roster as some sort of success. He competed at a WrestleMania mm-hmm. within like, he competed in an NXT, WrestleMania, and probably something else, all in the, within the he span did, of like he four did, months. He did the SmackDown, he did Raw, SmackDown, NXT, the, the mania all in the a week. NXT before <laughs> yeah the NXT before mania and the mania the day after yeah I I also like that he um he is literally saying you know um reporters are always lying you know like he, he's basically saying like a lot of the stories you read are lies um 
I, I want to get to Murphy real quick before we kind of go into. It, I'm sorry, man. The Alice shit really like really bums me out, bro. It really does. I I know. I, he was he was my guy. Like it's it's Alistair, it's Finn, it's Ricochet. Um, those oh, are I would have I would have stopped balling if Ricochet got released. I'm like he just got a new pair of pants, nigga. You know, like I uh, it, it's it's tough. Like because you know you you really want to get to the rhyme or reason as to why stuff like this happens. Um, right, and, and I'm glad. And I think a lot. I think a lot of people are jumping to oh uh, WWE. I saw WWE. This has got to be the worst space that WWE has ever been. I was like, you are on crack. Ninety five, by the way. N- Ninety five, nineteen ninety five. <laughs> you're on crack. Like you're on crack if you think that this is the worst that WWE has ever been. And budget cuts are going to happen. I think. I think we uh, we look at budget cuts and we look at a a billion dollar generating company and we think, how the hell does budget cuts happen? And to those people, I kind of say you really don't kind of know how business works. <laughs> like, you know, what you what you uh, they're not like what they generate and what they put in are completely the same thing. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a little bit harder than like, yo, they made a billion dollars. How are you just going to re- like release all these people? It's like, well, some of these things are unfortunate. I think um, all of us have been let go from a job at some point over whatever reason and stuff. Some of us have been lesser reason than budget cuts. Some of us just been like, yo, right. I don't really want you to keep, I don't really want to even put you, have you here anymore. Can we get into Braun really quick? I, a lot of people are, not a lot of people, to, not a lot of people to me are, are workshopping him around to other companies. But honestly, I think Braun would be great in movies, man. He seems like he's a really like, He's a he's a larger than life character that could fit on like a a TV show or a movie or or voice or voice work like Mortal Kombat nigga exactly like he seems like someone that could really really like make it there. I'm not saying he couldn't wrestle anymore, but I feel like his his talents are better used in a place where like wrestling's not that anymore. And I think that's always been our thing, right? Because that's why we said like Braun could never hold the championship for any sizable amount of time because then he have to start losing. You know what I mean? And then mm. then the intrigue goes away or the bell rings and he has to have a match. And if you want to talk about how much they put behind Alistair, they put the house behind Braun Strowman at one point. He, I don't mm. think he has anything to hold his head for. No, that summer Braun was a real thing. Yeah, like he has nothing to hold his head for. He was an absolute bona fide star before Brock said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> literally. You could literally pinpoint the moment it happened. Right. <laughs> but but no no I 100% agree with you I think Braun Strowman um, I think you increase your value you look at someone like for instance and I know Dave I guess Dave Batista is a bad thing maybe like Nathan Jones for instance who was like literally that's why I shout out Mortal Kombat because still to this day Nathan Jones is getting work you know what I'm saying yeah. he hasn't been in WWE for o- almost 20 years now and he's still getting work because of his size and his presence and his look and stuff like that, you got to think about Vladimir Kozlov, a couple of the big guys. I think these people are so larger than life. And then I also think, like, what other wrestling company is going to use a guy like Braun in the same way without bastardizing him? Yeah. Which one? Because I can't see AEW... I can see AEW using him, but then he kind of restarts his career in the background as the muscle, as the enforcer, as this thing where you know that Braun Strowman over the last five years has shown that he can contribute so much more. He can talk. Mm-hmm. If you can all that talking, he can, he can, yeah, he wrestles, he wrestles. He, he does the thing. He does the thing. I'm not even going to say as much as I haven't enjoyed Braun Strowman. And that's really because of, I guess the exhaustion of Braun Strowman and just the angles that he's put in and how stupid he's made to look. Right. Um, he does work hard. He does put in the effort. Um, he has improved immensely since the first day. Considering the first day that we saw him, and he was uh, he was ago uh, the first day because he hadn't gone through. He was one of the first stars that we saw debut post NXT who hadn't actually had to go through the NXT process. Um, um Brandon Thurston, uh, he's a data guy. Really, really good account to follow if you haven't on Twitter. Um, he okay. mentioned he mentions that WWE had over 300 wrestlers under contract in 2020, 
way more than they need for basically no reason other than to hoard them from competition. Doing so probably mm-hmm. contributed to talent leverage and pay negotiations, which we have seen. Um, new leadership might not see this approach as cost effective. Understandably, wrestlers, too, may be looking for a grand reason why they or their friends were cut. 78 out of the uh, more than 300 of them wrestled on all TV WWE Network shows in the last full week, including those who were just at ringside. Granted, more appeared in non-wrestling roles. Even allowing Mm. for that and a substantial number of off-screen and developmental or uh, out with injuries, the ratio doesn't make sense. The defense built to guard against AEW, putting NXT head-to-head on cable and, and, and warehousing talent, is costly and affecting and is somewhat being undone. It... It's absolutely true. 300, they don't need 300 wrestlers. This man has earned my follow just right off there. Yeah. I just hit it. <laughs> it, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. And I think that's what it comes down to. It's, it's a great segue <laughs> into the next part of the conversation where it is not, a lot of people are saying sale. I get it. It does look like that. But it also means it's time to focus on the surefire acts that we have and make them stars. They got over they got over four brands with a with mm-hmm. a fifth one allegedly coming with the evolved stuff. Why we right. they need to focus on those guys and women. There's so many women in the in NXT right now. <laughs> Meals. There are so many. I just watched NXT well, last night and they had at least right. three or four women segments alone. And there and, and you know right. what was crazy? It wasn't all of them weren't even wrestling. And there were four segments with women. <laughs> It's it's crazy. I don't think it's not necessarily crazy, but it's clear that WWE has invested a lot in their future. But at some point, you gotta, as Brandon Thurston actually says, he's like, at some point, you gotta figure out what is cost effective and what is it. Do we hold all these superstars? Do we hire all these guys? Do we give them, you know, how many thousands of dollars um, every year and just not use them, and just or like sparingly use them, or like can we? continue on with a roster a television cast as i say I, I like to use the word cast a lot because i think that's what raw and the smackdown rosters and even the nxt roster in itself eventually it boils down to on a tv show it boils down to a cast how many people do you need like under studies waiting in the background if you never really use them mm-hmm. um unfortunately these six people for the most part i would say probably about three of them are used very frequently and I think overall it was rather than release maybe seven more people, they just decided, can we eat this Braun one? And it was like, yeah, maybe we do. Maybe Braun Strowman isn't part of the future. Maybe what? Maybe they they determine this. I don't know how they determine this, but maybe they sit down and be like, yo, how do we? Maybe this is the option. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. very weird. I mean, this uh, is all very weird. I mean, the, I mean, the, the general rule of thumb is, as Brandon said, there were just way too many people. I mean, we would ask from week to week. We just asked yesterday, where the hell is Alistair? <laughs> you know, no. we, we just asked that. We just asked where Murphy is. Like, if this cuts down on the amount of time that I could say, where's Alistair? And I say, oh, I can go flip to AEW. He's over there. Or I could go flip to ROH. He's over there. I can go see him on, on Friday. You know, if we can cut down on those questions, then I think that's a you know, general plus, like the world's opening up again. Um, I'm glad that they, they, I'm not glad that they let them go, but I'm glad that it's a lot more open of an opportunity for them now than it was in 2020. We would be having a different conversation last year about this, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. but, uh, but um, just in general, this company is, is paring back budget. Um, they are, I don't know if they're preparing for a sale. You know, what's kind of crazy is that the self-fulfilling prophecy that we kind of come, we, we kind of have been mentioning this. We mentioned it on the last episode. We said, ah, man, this is the big payback. They, 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 they're gearing up for something. They're trying to make themselves Mm -hmm. look more viable. And as it's happening, it's like, damn, but damn, it does suck that that's what has to happen (laughs) in order for that to, (laughs) to succeed. You know what I mean? Like they are, they are building this company and, you know, WWE is going to look very different in about a year and a half, two years. I don't know if it's going to affect this show, but it's going to look like a very different place in terms of how they do content, how they do shows, even maybe how they how they present the wrestling meals. Like it's going to look real different in a, in a minute. And this yeah. is this is proof. I mean, we we talked about 
the the new people they hired and and i still you know what shout out to us because we i feel like we're still the only like podcast that's actually talking about this thing because all of these things matter and it, it and it showed today you know what i'm saying yeah like all these new hires that we talked about the the, the tony cons and not tony cons whew, not that guy um the nick cons and um home I forgot the name of the homegirl the, who they hired last year that actually did extensive research on, which was wild. Um, but all these hires matter, and all these hires are to kind of push the company in a certain direction. The brand of WWE is changing. From uh, I granted, and I 100% believe that the brand we see in 2021, or rather, you know what? Let's use a bigger swath. The brand we saw in 2015 that came up with the network and we were all clapping like, oh, my God, this is such a great idea. And the brand that will be in 2025 where we're on Peacock and, and, and maybe SmackDown is on NBC. Know, SmackDown on, be on NBC. NBC. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or something along those lines. Those, the brand is going to be completely different. WrestleMania is going to be completely different. The way it's presented in the media is going to be completely different. And, uh, you know. We're currently living through it now. I don't doubt that any of these people who were let go can absolutely come back. Well, Alistair, uh, I mean, he's not saying as much, but he's alluding to as much that, like, this he completely understands why it was. And, I mean, he's talking about opening his own wrestling school and stuff like that. I, I think Alistair will be back. Um, and, you know, Murphy hasn't said anything. I think Braun will be back, if only in a, in a part-time capacity. And when he yeah, comes, I in, think Braun will be back. Yeah. And when he comes back, people will like like you got to think like WWE changed this guy's life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like Braun will definitely literally. Be back. Yeah. <laughs> like, Braun was Braun was a strong man, straw man. You know all types of thing. And now look, look at him. Yeah. Even though he was out in the ass shorts the other week, I was like, what the <laughs> hell was that about? But yeah, no, you're right. You're right. They change um, all these lives. Yeah. I I mean. I think he'll be back. I, I, you know, Alistair, I'm sure down the line, I, I, again, this started with the kind of the Andrade thing. Let's just see what they do with with, with what they got. You know, let's see what they do with what they got. They, they released over 76 people in the past month. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Um, we're coming out of this kind of pandemic thing in regards to the wrestling company, not in actual real life, wear your mask. We're coming out of this. I would call it, the the pandemic era of wwe um what's next man is it are we i don't think we go back to the way things were before but like we're clearly i think we're on the cusp of entering a new era of the wwe yeah if i had to think with the way nick khan is doing it and who he's hiring they're going to really revamp the way that wrestling companies have been run, right? So with AW, New Japan, all these people, places, there are producers, they're writers, they're creative, or former wrestling people. It's all mm-hmm. former wrestling people. Who are they hiring now? People who worked at NBA, people who worked at MLB, people who worked at uh, uh, Dazzin, people who worked at all these other places. Um, WWE is going to be run differently, and I think it's going to it's going to affect everything from the top down. I think it, from talent uh, and the way that they, you know, the way that they're treated to the way that the storylines are created. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I do know that if you see who they focus in on 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 the posters, the Roman, the Bianca's, the Sasha's, the Becky's, Woo. that's that's who they're going to be focusing on, and that's going to be the sto- the storytellers going forward. Anyone else to me is, is it's it's gonna be real weird to see how they how they create those stories, but you know, I can see us coming out into the you know fuck fuck the pandemic era. This is the this is uh this is the wrath of Khan. That's what it is. <laughs> this is the wrath Don't of Khan. Don't say the wrath. Don't say the wrath. This is the I rain mean, the I mean, rain of this is the rain of Khan. This is what it thing. is. They hired this they hired this nigga Mills and immediately. You started shit to see change. changes. Exactly. You started to see shit but change. That's, that, that's with any with any management. With any management. I tell this to people if you're getting any of first. If if anyone who's listening to this, you're getting it, you know, new jobs or et cetera, or starting their first like kind of like full time gig, with any new management comes a lot of change. A lot of change. Some may be good, some may be bad. It's really kind of subjective. It really de- kind of determined on who the boss is. 
but there's going to be some sort of change, a representative of a regime change. And we're kind of seeing it here. And not necessarily like he's letting all these people go, blah, blah, blah. But he's clearly looking in the best interest of the company and seeing where can we make money and where can we save money. And that's kind of, you know, all these all these new hires, all these new, this Cardi B at SummerSlam, um, all those rumors, the Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny things, yeah. all, all these are investments into the future of WWE. Their sizzle reel is going to be fucking scorching by the end of this year. You know what I'm saying? Like... All these are investments. So if y'all think they still worried about, well, can NXT beat <laughs> AEW? They're not, not worried about that. Night. <laughs> they're not worried about that shit, bro. We keep telling people they're not worried about that shit. They're not worried about their own. They focus on them. Con to con. It's like, listen, you worry about your funny stuff. I worry about my money. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how it's kind of going to go. So uh, I just got a text from Wale saying Mills tweeted Mersey podcast. Y'all got to hurry up. So we're going to cut it right here at the behest of our good friend Wale <laughs> and Listen. and put and put this one out. And um, of course, uh, we'll, we'll have more analysis and in, in any comments uh, to come as uh, as we get more news on this uh, cool. next week. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on, on the A show. Obviously, you can subscribe to our Patreon. This will be obviously an ep- uh, emergency pod that's for both uh, free and Patreon audiences. But um, yeah, so until next week, let's hope nothing else crazy happens that we don't have to meet like let's, this. Let's hope nothing. <laughs> Come on. I don't know how many emergency podcasts I got in me. Come on, we're doing an invasion diary. Uh, <laughs> Come on, so you know, um, yeah, stay tuned, stay tuned. All right. uh, We'll see you guys next week.